This is the story of Beauty and the Beast. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. Once upon a time, a young prince lived in a giant castle. One cold night, an old beggar arrived and offered him a rose in return for shelter. He sneered at her gift and turned her away. Suddenly, she transformed into a beautiful enchantress. Then, she turned the prince into a hideous beast. The enchantress also changed the castle servants into enchanted objects. Then, she left behind a magic mirror and the rose. For the spell to be broken, the prince would have to fall in love and earn that person's love in return before the last petal fell. In a small village nearby lived a beautiful young woman named Belle. As she entered the town bookstore, the owner gave her a book as a gift. It's my favorite. Far off places, daring sword fights, magic spells, a prince in disguise. Oh, thank you very much. Belle rushed outside, reading as she walked. Soon, a hunter named Gaston walked up to her. He grabbed the book from her hands. It's about time you got your nose out of those books and paid attention to more important things, like me. Then Gaston's friend LeFou approached. He began to insult Belle's father, Maurice, who was an inventor. My father's not crazy. He's a genius. Then Belle ran toward her father's cottage. When Belle got home, she told her father that the townspeople were making fun of him. Don't worry, Belle. My invention's going to change everything for us. Maurice was hoping to sell his latest creation at the town fair. He hopped on his horse, Philippe, and headed into town. But Maurice got lost, and he and Philippe ended up in a dark, misty forest. All of a sudden, a pack of wolves surrounded them. <laughs> Philippe reared and ran away. Terrified, Maurice raced through the forest with the wolves right behind him. When he reached a tall gate, he opened it and dashed inside. Then he slammed it shut on the angry wolves. Belle's father looked up and saw a huge castle. He walked up to the front door and knocked. Hello? I've lost my horse and I need a place to stay for the night. Of course, monsieur, you're welcome here. Maurice looked down to see a clock and a candelabrum staring up at him. This is impossible! Why, you're alive! The candelabrum, named Lumiere, led him inside. All of a sudden, a loud voice boomed. There's a stranger here! In the shadows lurked a large, hulking figure. It was the beast. Maurice pleaded with him. Please, I needed a place to stay. But the beast ignored him and dragged him away. At home, Belle heard a knock on the door. Gaston. Belle, there's not a girl in town who wouldn't love to be in your shoes. Do you know why? Because I want to marry you. Belle turned his proposal down. She did not like the conceited bully. Disappointed, Gaston left. A little while later, Belle went outside and found Philippe all alone. Philippe, what are you doing here? Where's Papa? <coughs> the horse whinnied anxiously. Frightened, Belle quickly leaped onto Philippe, who led her to the mysterious forest. Soon, they spotted a castle in the distance.
Inside the castle, the beast showed Belle to her room. You can go anywhere you like, except the West Wing. What's in the West Wing? It's forbidden! The beast stomped off. Belle ran into her bedroom. I'll never escape from this prison or see my father again. Her new friends, the enchanted household objects, tried to cheer her up, but Belle was too upset. Later that night, Belle was feeling a little better. Lumiere led her into the dining room. The napkins, dishes, and spoons danced as the serving pieces carried in tasty food. Belle was delighted. When they returned, Belle tended to the beast's wounds and thanked him for saving her life. The beast smiled. To show how grateful he was, he gave her access to the beautiful castle library. Meanwhile, Gaston was plotting to put Belle's father in an insane asylum. The only way he wouldn't do it was if Belle agreed to marry him. Gaston was convinced that soon she would become his wife. But moments later, a group of men grabbed Maurice to take him away. Gaston put his arm around Belle. I can clear up this little misunderstanding. If you marry me... I'll never marry you. My father's not crazy. I can prove it. She showed Gaston the magic mirror. An image of the beast appeared in it. Gaston shouted. I say we kill the beast! Then he and the villagers headed toward the castle. When the townsfolk arrived, 
Gaston forced the beast onto the roof. As they fought, Gaston lost his balance and he fell to the ground. The beast suddenly collapsed. Belle ran toward him. She cried. No, please. I love you. Seconds later, the beast sprung into the air. He was surrounded by a shimmering glow. Belle had told the beast that she loved him, which meant that the evil spell that had been cast on him and all of the household staff was broken. The beast transformed back into a handsome prince. Belle, it's me. It is you. <laughs> True love had broken the spell, and Belle and the beast lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs>